In the story of Adam and Eve, why is the forbidden fruit most often depicted as an apple? The story doesn't say apple. When you Google this question, the answer you'll most likely get is actually wrong. The answer you'll find on Wikipedia is that the apple comes from the Latin translation of the Hebrew Bible in the 5th century. When Genesis 3.5 describes the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the word evil is translated as malum. Malum is also a separate Latin word which means apple. So it has been suggested that the similarity between the words caused Christian writers to connect them. As popular as this answer is, it's wrong. There is simply no evidence in Latin commentaries of anyone picking up on this accidental wordplay. And even in Latin, malum could actually refer to any fleshy fruit, with a skin such as a pear or a pomegranate or a peach. So we need to look elsewhere for the origins of the forbidden apple. Our earliest sources are Christian carvings and illustrations on catacombs and sarcophagi from the 4th century CE, which mostly depicts the fruit as a fig. There is only one lone example of the fruit being an apple from this period. In early Jewish writing, the rabbis discuss how the fruit could have been a grape, or a fig, or even a wheat plant. This map of surviving artworks shows how the fig dominated prior to the 8th century. The apple didn't become popular until many centuries later, starting in the 12th century in France. Round, apple-sized, forbidden fruit started appearing in stained glass windows and carvings in churches all across France. Prior to 1250 CE, it was just one of several options. But after this turning point, the apple totally dominated. The same thing occurred in the rest of Western Europe too. Prior to 1250, the apple hardly featured at all. Afterwards, it is the overwhelming majority. So what caused this change? How did we get from figs and pomegranates to the apple? Well, Professor Azan Yadin Israel explains in his book, Temptation Transformed, that it's all to do with language. The old French word for fruit was pom, so the forbidden fruit was a forbidden pom. At some point around the 12th century, the meaning of pom became more specific. It started to mean apple. A similar thing happened in Old English, where apple once meant fruit of many different kinds, but later its meaning narrowed to mean apple. The same thing also happened to the German apfel. And so when earlier translations and commentaries described the forbidden fruit, they may well have meant fruit in the broad sense, but as the language changed, later readers understood them to be apples. This also explains why in southern Italy the fig continued to dominate over the apple until much later. This is because in the north, the meaning of the Italian word pomo narrowed to mean apple. But in the south, pomo could refer to many fruits, and so the fig tradition persisted. This is also the region that gave birth to perhaps the most famous depiction of the forbidden fruit, Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, which famously features a fig. But wait, there's something else that truly cemented the apple in Western culture the Gutenberg printing press. Along with texts, artists could create engravings that could be printed onto the pages. Adam and Eve were a popular subject for illustrations in printed Bibles, such as the 1504 German artist Albrecht Dürer's depiction of Adam and Eve, or Hans Brossemer's engraving of the 1550 edition of the Luther Bible. Through these replicatable artworks, the apple took prime position as the forbidden fruit. We can't know what fruit the author of Genesis 2-3 wanted their readers to imagine, but we can say it probably wasn't an apple. There's little evidence that apples were widely available in ancient Palestine. It probably also wasn't a grape, as the forbidden fruit is referred to as the fruit of the tree or wood but grapes are referred to in the Hebrew Bible as the fruit of the vine. 
If the author was imagining a specific fruit, then something like a fig or a pomegranate or even some unknown fruit that is now extinct seems probably a safer bet. The research for this video comes from the book Temptation Transformed by Azan Yadin Israel. It's highly entertaining and goes into much more detail. I'll leave links for that in the description. Big shout out to the patrons who support this channel. Help us make more videos like this by supporting us with a few dollars each month. Commandment number 11, share and comment below.